Good morning, everybody. As we prepare to begin the ceremony today, please take a moment to silence your cell phones, please. I see some of you doing it. Thank you so much. All right, will y'all please stand for the processional.
Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on now. You can do a lot better than that. Good morning. Good morning. So much better. I am Nagi Naganathan. I am president of Oregon Tech, and it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to this event. This is a special year in the history of our, our university and for our graduates. This year, we are celebrating Oregon Tech's 75th anniversary and the class of 2023, you are graduating in this very special milestone year for Oregon Tech. Welcome to your commencement ceremony. <laughs> At this time, I request you to stand if you are able and join me in opening our ceremonies with the national anthem. Please be seated. To our Oregon Tech graduating class, honored keynote speaker, Oregon House Representative General Bynum, Board Chair John Davis, Representative Courtney Niran, the audience, I saw her. Thank you for being here. And other trustees, family, faculty, staff, friends, welcome. We are so happy you are all here to join us in this significant day. Thank you as well to the Wilsonville community for always welcoming and supporting our students and all of us. We appreciate the leadership of Mayor Julie Fitzgerald city councilors on the partnership that we have with you, as well as our county commissioners. As we begin this ceremony, we recognize that Oregon Tech's Portland Metro Campus resides on the ancestral and contemporary home of the Clackamas, Catlamet, Multnomah, the Tualatin, Kalapuya people, Tumwater, and the Watlala bands of the Chinook, who have stewarded this land since time immemorial. In doing so, we honor their legacy and lives, as well as commit to continuing to build the relationship with the native peoples of this region, the state of Oregon, and across the United States. I would also like to recognize and honor Oregon Tech's graduates and current students and alumni who are veterans or who are currently active in our military, as well as all of those in the audience today who have served in the armed forces could you please stand up and be recognized? Thank you. I'm also pleased to greet Oregon Tech's alumni who are here with us today. Thank you for continuing to engage with and support Oregon Tech. You are not only a connection to our past, you are a foundational building block for our future success. Today, I want to give special recognition to one of our alums who is with us, 
He is very active in the Oregon Tech community and is a champion for our students and industry-driven partnerships. As I recognize him, please hold your applause. I'm going to give a brief introduction. This is Sam Elliott, not the actor. This is the real-time alumnus of Oregon Tech making a great difference in the life of Oregon Tech students. Sam, could you stand and be stay standing? Samuel Elliott is a member of the classes of 2013 and 15 and is now a 777X production engineering manager for the Boeing Company. With his passion and commitment to Oregon Tech and our students, he, along with other Oregon Tech alums, has helped to create a very special partnership between Boeing and Oregon Tech, whereby Oregon Tech students can be employed as Boeing interns in Klamath Falls, which is a rural part of Oregon, while they are attending school and working on current Boeing projects. Our next phase is to expand it to Wilsonville. This is a new model of internship in our industry university paradigm that allows many more Oregon Tech students to get rich industry experience without navigating the typical constraints of having to relocate, find housing, and go through all the other challenges during their academic programs. So now please join me in a round of applause to thank Sam Elliott for his visionary leadership and commitment to Oregon Tech. Now turning to our graduates. It gives all of us great pleasure to share this day with so many young people who have worked so diligently towards earning their degrees. Graduates, just four or five years ago, you set a goal to be seated where you are this day. So if you are rejoicing to have finally survived all the last minute projects and papers, all those computers that just always seem to crash just before you are going to back them up, and finally to have survived all the 8 a.m. classes and assignments after being out in a coffee house <laughs> all night. Parents, you do know I'm being polite here. You have good reason to be rejoicing, and you should enjoy every moment of it. At the same time, let's also reflect for a few minutes on the past, present, and the future. Let me start with the famous quote on the future. This is often repeated. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. This 13-word quote is often attributed to famous First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, although it cannot be directly cited to any of her works. Today, as I stand here before you, it is not the author of the quote that makes these 13 words meaningful. The value of these words is in their truth and the power you hold within you as Oregon Tech graduates to shape the future you want for yourself, your loved ones, and the communities in which you live and support. Today, graduates, let the beauty of your dreams be the motivation that propels you into your next chapter, your own unique future. Often when we think of the future, we think of a far off intangible time that we can only know and understand once we reach a specific milestone or when a significant change takes place. And too often, what we forget to recognize in our day-to-day -day lives is that yesterday's future is today and that tomorrow's future will be here soon enough. Throughout history, people have attempted to predict the future, whether for crop security, food resource availability, health outcomes for societies, or technology for advancement. The only certain thing we know about the future is that it will happen. And the most reliable way to predict the future is by having a hand in building it. This ceremony today is a future you began envisioning the way, the day you applied for Oregon Tech. The cap, the gown, the tassel that you display today are recognition of a future you made happen. Regardless of your degree program, you believed in your ability to make positive and meaningful change in the world. You became an agent of change, first for yourself and now for others. Your accomplishment is a testament to your determination 
and resilience. Through a multi-year pandemic, which imposed uncertainty, isolation, and adapting to new modes of learning, you drove yourself to stay focused in your studies and sought new ways to adapt and see the world. Now as graduates, that drive is what will make you successful and successful leaders of tomorrow. Whether you are entering the world as well-prepared professionals or continuing on to an advanced program, it is time for you to demonstrate your value proposition to the world, to show the world what you are capable of, and to build the future. With the Oregon Tech education you have received, the world you create is only limited by your vision and determination. As you make your way in the world, do not be complacent. As Oregon Tech grads, you will be sought by local, national, and international employers, not because STEM age jobs are in demand, but because of what you know and your ability to solve problems that are relevant to society. Step up and be leaders of tomorrow. Believe in yourself and your ability to be an agent of change. The future is not something that should happen to us when we have the power to be change makers the future is something we build. Go forward and walk with swagger, with a sense of purpose and service. Today, you have the distinction of graduating from Oregon's Polytechnic University. When you leave the stadium today, as newly minted Oregon Tech grads, let the beauty of your dreams be the catalyst that inspires you to build the future. Explore new dimensions and be bold and dream big. Graduates, I'm sure you will readily agree with me that your success today and the future possibilities did not happen just by your own efforts, but with the support of many special people in your lives, your parents, spouses, significant others, grandparents, and in some cases, children. Without their love and support, this day would not be a reality. May I now request all of the families and friends of the graduates to rise and stand if you are able. I ask everyone to join me in a round of applause as we thank them for their love and support. All right. Thank you very much. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, John Davis who currently serves as chair of the Oregon Tech Board of Trustees. Chair Davis has a proven track record of public service in Oregon and also with Oregon Tech and the communities in which he lives and supports. From 2013 to 2017, Chair Davis served as a member of the Oregon House of Representatives representing District 26, which is our district here in Wilsonville. He has also served as a member of the Oregon Tech Foundation Board and recently served as vice president for the foundation board. Chair Davis has been a member of the university's board of trustees since March 2022, and was unanimously elected by fellow trustees to serve as board chair in August 2022. We are extremely grateful for Trustee Davis's dedication to our university. When he's not donating his time for the benefit of Oregon Tech success, he is a business, nonprofit, and estate planning attorney practicing in Portland, Bend, and Klamath Falls, and serves as a managing partner in his law firm, Lynch Murphy McLean LLP. He earned his bachelor's degree from George Fox University and his Juris Doctorate from Willamette University. His ed educational experience also includes a scholar semester tenure at Oxford, England. Chair Davis is one of Oregon Tech's most ardent champions and a strong supporter of collaboration, both internally and externally. Since becoming board chair, he has demonstrated leadership in ensuring the board of trustees works in concert with our faculty, students, staff, and administration for continued success as Oregon's Polytechnic University. Thank you, Chair Davis, for all you have done and continue to do for Oregon Tech and for being here today to honor our distinguished graduates. Please join me now in welcoming board chair John Davis. Ha, ha, ha. 
Well, good morning. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I just want to say thank you so much, family, friends, staff, faculty, and of course our graduates for gathering today. And in particular, on, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, you know, I've been involved in higher education for a long, long time. And what I've learned is that faculty are the rock upon which universities are built. Faculty are the constant. Administrators come and go, students come and go, but professors and staff and faculty are here. And so on behalf of uh, the graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'd like to give a round of applause to our faculty for getting each of you to where you are today. Which really brings us to the question of why are we even here today? I mean, I make it a habit of trying to mentor a college student every single year, and almost invariably, the last couple years, each of these students asks me, well, should I walk at graduation? You know, it's on a Sunday, it's on a weekend, I'd rather go do something, and my answer is always yes. Because I believe the human condition requires milestones like this. You're probably not gonna remember that I was standing up here. You're probably not gonna remember who speaks today. I don't remember who spoke at my undergrad or my law school graduation, but I do remember those days. I remember my parents sitting out in the crowd. I remember my family. I remember the professors who I loved. I remember that milestone, and that is what is important, is that you can look back 10 years, 15 years, 25 years into the future during difficult times and during good times in your life and have this milestone of today. So right now I encourage you, think about that professor who got you to where you are today who's maybe sitting here with you. Think of your family in the background who's standing here celebrating with you. I believe you made the right choice in being here today. We are so proud of you on behalf of the Board of Trustees and we just wish you a wonderful day. I'm excited on behalf of the trustees that we have our friend, Representative Bynum here today. And with that, let's give a round of applause to our graduates for the great job they did in getting here. Thank you, Chair Davis, for your special message and greetings on behalf of the board to our graduates. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to this year's keynote speaker, Oregon House Representative, General Bynum. Representative Bynum is serving her fourth term as the Oregon State Representative for District 39. In the legislature, she is chairwoman of the House Committee on Small Business Economic Development and the Joint Committee on Semiconductors co-chair. She also serves as a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee. During her tenure in the legislature, Representative Bynum has spearheaded bipartisan initiatives encompassing voter engagement and turnout, investment in K through 12 and higher education, juvenile and criminal justice reform, police accountability, and targeted support for small businesses. In the current 23 session, Representative Bynum led a bipartisan effort to pass Senate Bill 4 to support Oregon semiconductor industry and advanced manufacturing sectors. The bill allocates $210 million to re revitalize Oregon semiconductor industry, building a foundation for Oregon to grow thousands of jobs through investments in small businesses, housing, child care, and land availability. <laughs> Concurrent with her leadership in public service, Representative Bynum and her husband Mark are parents to four children and own four McDonald's restaurants. She serves on the board of the Grand Central Bakery, and she has served on the board of trustees for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Oregon, Business Oregon, the Center for Women's Leadership, and the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs. Now, not only she is an accomplished and impactful public servant, I learned recently she has an interesting hobby which is collecting flying pigs. She believes in doing the impossible, but in her case, I should also mention, if she wants to, she can make an actual pig fly. She's an electrical engineer by his education and training. She can make a pig fly if she wants to. And she earned her undergraduate degree in electrical engineering from Florida A&M University. 
and had an MBA from the University of Michigan Ross Business School. He was also actively employed in the tech industry before she moved to Oregon. My friends, please join me in welcoming Representative Janelle Bynum. Thank you. All right, good morning, OIT. Good One more time, good morning, OIT. Good morning. All right, good morning, President Nagy, Board of Trustees, faculty members, staff, graduates, and family members. Today is a very fine day for all of us. It's a day of accomplishment, joy, and celebration. It can also be a day marking the line between a fairly carefree life where family provided you the resources and space to explore the things that you wanted to do, or for many of us, a life filled with too many obligations, too little time, and probably too little money. Ah, that student life. Most importantly though, OIT class of 2023, today is a day of opportunity optimism, and options. Now some people would suggest that you move forward with your passions. Instead, I'd like to suggest that today is the day that you move forward with your why. Many people will tell you to find something that you love and pursue it as your life's passion. I don't necessarily agree with that. I say finding your why is what will keep you on the road to happiness, fulfillment, contentment, and motivation. But it doesn't mean that the road will be easy, but it will provide you with the emotional nourishment you need to keep going when things get hard and the courage to make the right decisions when you hit a fork in the road. So graduates, your why is the gas in your tank. And since this, since this is Oregon, it's like the motor on your EV or your bike. It's the fuel for your motivation and success. And just so you know, passion, it fades like young love or sidewalk chalk or suntan. Passion is sufficient for a while until it isn't. So how do I know this? It, I know it because I've done two unconventional things in my life. As a young girl from the inner city of Washington, D.C., I chose to go to college and study electrical engineering. And number two, as a married mother of four young children, I chose to do this crazy thing called running for office. Not one, not two, not three, but four dumb times <laughs> in one of the most competitive districts in the state of Oregon. So let's talk about it. When I was in about the sixth grade, I started going to engineering camps on Saturdays and in the summers. I loved going to make bridges out of popsicle sticks and doing the egg drop to see whose package could cushion the precious cargo the most. But most of all, I loved the speakers that came in and told us how much money they made. <laughs> I did. <laughs> You see, I was the daughter of teachers. My parents were educated, but they weren't compensated well. It was about the mid-80s, and during that time, we were just ex exiting a long period of segregated education in this country. My mother had attended the last segregated class 
of high school in South Carolina, class of 1970. And this was the last class to desegregate after the Board of Education's, Brown versus Board of Education's 1954 Supreme Court decision. So the options for my mother's career choices were few. She was the valedictorian, but she wasn't slated to go to college. She wanted to be an accountant, but teaching was pretty much all that was available to her. She was a first-generation college student with very little money and very little help navigating the world of higher education. I'm sure many of us can relate. As for my dad, he wanted to be a pharmacist, but he didn't have the preparation it took to pass organic chemistry. So teaching for him, it was. They both went on to earn master's degrees, but the field of education as they experienced it was never going to lead them to a life of extraordinary comfort or assured generational wealth. They would seek that, again, like many of you, for their children instead. So during these engineering camps, the speakers would come and tell us about the elements of their really cool jobs. And they would tell us very candidly about their compensation. We asked where they lived, what kind of car they drove, about their lifestyle. They were honest with us that engineering and technology was a career path that paid the bills and allowed you the freedom to explore the world comfortably. Engineering was a field that would take us off the margins, off the sidelines of society, and put us solidly in the middle class. For many kids in my community, the ticket up and out was sports. Everybody wanted to be a ball player. But for us, we were mathletes, and I was proud of that. I do have to say, I got on the white van every Wednesday to go to math competitions, and I am still proud of that to this day. <laughs> Coupling that experience with a summer abroad in Japan and a summer internship studying silicon germanium microchips at the Naval Research Lab and a summer internship at Boeing, I chose to study electrical engineering. I wanted to be an engineer at Sony because I was always mesmerized by the sound of music coming from a speaker. I wanted to travel abroad more and see the world through different people's eyes. After all, my parents had named me Janelle Sojourner Eirich. And Sojourner means traveler. It was a why that they gave me at birth and I didn't even know it. But I knew that if I could complete the engineering curriculum, the world was my oyster. And so I did. I attended a historically black university, Florida A&M, and pushed through the rigors of the program. I cried a lot. Like many of you, I took Calculus 1, Calculus 2, Calculus 3, Engineering Math 1, Engineering Math 2, I took signals and systems, microelectronics, one and two, C programming, Fortran, sonar systems, you name it, I took it. And as a first generation engineering student, none of that came easy to me. Other people had family members and mentors that could explain things to them, but I, my, my dad only had one friend and I could call him occasionally. But I studied hard and I earned entrance into the Engineering Honor Society, Tau Beta Pi, and graduated with honors. It was my why that propelled me to finish that tough curriculum. So fast forward, and when I graduated, I never did go to work for Sony. Instead, I went to work for General, well, we called it Generous Motors, in Saginaw, Michigan. They had great jobs, they had great jobs. And, and what was becoming the Rust Belt was still opportunity. I was 21 years old, and I was able to get my own apartment. I was able to pay for a car. I was able to set a little money aside, and I was able to get a scholarship to attend graduate school. That job allowed me to fulfill my dreams of becoming an engineer and to continue on my path of seeking financial independence and to be analytically creative. So to our graduates today, I'm sure many of us share similar stories. 
those of unlikely success, beating the odds, and the good fortune of having this opportunity to graduate from this awesome university. Graduates, think back on why you chose to enroll here, what you thought you were going to accomplish, and why that is important to you. Now, my second proof point is sharing with you my choice to dip my toe into public service back in 2016. And this rain is going to help me tell the story a little bit. There have been many days where I had to give up my evenings and weekends to knock on doors, take votes in the legislature, or listen to community testimony. I've missed basketball games, soccer games, tennis games, any kind of game you can think of my four kids played, I've missed them. So I overcompensated as the snack mom, and any kind of checklist you can think of, I've done it. Sometimes when I'm having a hard day or someone has been pretty mean to me, people don't like politicians, um, I'll ask myself, why am I doing this? Like, I could be doing something else. Or whenever I decide to run again, I say, why am I putting myself through this torture again and again and again? But I know my why, and I'll share it with you. One day I remember canvassing, which is knocking on doors, when I was out in a neighborhood in Gresham. It was raining softly, just like this, but it started to pick up. I was recording my notes on my phone, and I recall it vividly because the rain started to pick up. And people weren't really answering their doors, and I was starting to get discouraged. And as the rain continued to fall and it came down heavier and heavier, the tears on my face started falling heavier and heavier, and I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know. So I went and I got back in my car, and I pulled myself together, and I had to dig into my why. And so the reason I was out there like a crazy woman was because I believed in education and the power to transform lives. I wanted to make sure that Oregon had the best schools, whether it was K-12 or higher ed. My slogan that I kept repeating to myself was passing opportunity on. That meant something to me. My grandparents and my parents had given me the opportunities that they didn't have, and I wanted to honor that gift and pay it forward. So creating and defending opportunity is at the center of what I do. It is what allows me to weather the tough times and to hold on to hope. It is what allows me to be an optimist you know the person that collects the flying pigs because they say when pigs fly, that'll happen. And I hope it does for you as well. It is my why, pure and simple. For you, this path through an already tough curriculum coupled with the complexities of COVID and an unforgiving inflationary economy means that you have already dug into your why because not everyone gets to call themselves an OIT graduate. Not everyone has passed every class on the first or second try. Not everyone has accomplished what you have. You are special and deserving of every honor bestowed upon you today. And I'll add one note that I didn't have scripted. I have a 21-year-old daughter who's about to graduate from college, but I remember when she was graduating high school during COVID, she didn't have a whole lot of honor cords, but you know what? Amazon had them, and she ordered every, <laughs> every cord she could get. So sometimes when the world doesn't give you your cords, you just go on Amazon and you get yourself a cord. Okay? Or you call me and I will hype you up to the highest because I haven't been at the game so I'm the loudest cheerer ever. In closing, I'm gonna share with you a few quotes to bring home the point. The first, the two most important days in life are the day you were born and the day you discover the reason why. And that's from Mark Twain, at least the internet says so. <laughs> People don't buy what you do they buy why you do it. 
That's from a guy, Simon Sinek. And the third, what you do is only ever as good as why you do it. And that one, I couldn't find the guy. <laughs> so now my charge to you is this. Oregon needs you. You are among our best and brightest. You are talented, industrious, and brilliant. You are the future who will push the boundaries of what is possible. Now I want you to go home, look in the mirror, fix yourself into your power pose. There's a whole science on power posing and birds. Look it up, it's a great TED talk. <laughs> Smile and tell yourself why you are here on this earth and what you came to do. And then go do it. So to the class of 2023, I wish you the sincerest of congratulations from the bottom of my heart. And now here comes the call and response part. When I say onward, you all say upward, okay? You got it? Onward! 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 onward. Congratulations, you did it. Representative Bynum, that thank you for that very inspiring message. I bet that why message is going to resonate in so many words. I'm sure so many in this audience are going to see some part of your message resonating with what they have experienced to be here today. So thank you for bringing those memories back. We do have a small token of appreciation for Representative Bynum today. And we have a special guest made by our students and faculty. So I'm going to put it here first. And I'll tell you a little bit about the gift. This beautiful owl was 3D printed by our students and represents the state of the art education at Oregon Tech and Oregon's Polytechnic University. This is a historical milestone year, as I said before. This is our 75th anniversary. And the base comes from some special wood. In 1993, an earthquake struck our campus on the Klamath Falls campus. And our learn one of the buildings that was affected was our learning resource center, our library. So the wood is from the reclaimed wood from that earthquake damage. So I want to thank our staff and facilities, our faculty, our students that crafted this beautiful piece for Representative Bynum. I think one of the crafters is on the stage, Dr. Tim Pasong, are you here? If you stand up and be recognized, please. <laughs> also, Dr. Jim Lake, our facilities uh, director, as well as student, Aiden Williamson. Now, as we begin the recognition portion of our ceremony, I would like to begin with special thanks to members of our faculty and staff the awards given today are the recognition of the dedication, passion, and talent our faculty and staff bring to Oregon Tech. As Chair Davis said, it is only through the work they do every day that our university's mission continues to be met for the betterment of our students' experience and success. So I now request all the faculty that are in attendance today to stand and be recognized. Faculty. Please be seated. 
I now request all of our staff and administrators, even including those on the platform, please stand and be recognized. Please be seated. Next, I am pleased to recognize a special group of attendees today. We are grateful to our network of alumni and know there are many here today. I would like to take the opportunity to recognize a special group called Golden Owls who have joined us to celebrate the class of 2023. Members of the Golden Owls are alumni who graduated from Oregon Tech more than 40 years ago. Traditionally, one or more of the Golden Owls lead the student graduation procession. And over 50 alumni and guests joined this weekend's event. If there is any alum Golden Owls in the audience, I would appreciate them standing up or raise their hand and be recognized. If not, please thank them in absentia. I would now like to present the Oregon Tech, or uh, mention the Oregon Tech Foundation Excellence in Teaching Award. This student-selected award honors faculty members who have made a difference in the lives of students through outstanding teaching performance, exemplary commitment to students, and leadership initiatives supporting student success. There are two recipients here. One we recognized at the Klamath Falls commencement yesterday in when they were present. This year's recipient from the College of Engineering, Technology, and Management is Christy Weidman, instructor in the Department of Management from the Klamath Falls campus. And this year's recipient from the College of Health, Arts, and Sciences is with us today. That is David Johnston, instructor in the Department of Natural Sciences from the Portland Metro campus. If you could stand and please be recognized. Thank you. Also this year, we have four faculty members and two administrators who are selected to receive the prestigious title emeritus upon their retirement. If they are, I know at least a couple of them are present here. I request them to stand when I recognize them by name. Please hold your applause until I mention all six names. Start with, I'm going to start with Dr. Maureen Savigny, professor who has served Oregon Tech since 1995. I know she's here, Dr. Savigny. Stay standing, please. And then we have uh, other professors recognized are uh, Lloyd Parrott, assistant professor who has served at Oregon Tech since 2009. Dr. Michael Spector, uh, professor and executive director for industry partnerships between 85 and 2007. And Dr. Sherry Yang, professor who has served at Oregon Tech since 1997. We also have two emeritus administrators, and Dr. Aaron Foley, Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, who has served Oregon Tech since 1999, and Kaylee Caleb, Head Athletic Trainer, who has served at Oregon Tech since 2007. Please join me in thank, uh, recognizing them for this prestigious award. <laughs> It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Aaron Foley, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, who will recognize our student awardees who have recorded special accomplishments during their education at Oregon Tech. Vice President Foley has led our student affairs for 24 years, mentoring and supporting students to ensure their success. This ceremony will be Vice President Foley's last official commencement ceremony as she is retiring in a few days. Vice President Foley has been a steadfast supporter of Oregon Tech students and throughout the years participated in as many athletic events, school activities, and club events as humanly possible. <laughs> Vice President Foley's many responsibilities at Oregon Tech have included student life, admissions, housing, the health center, retention, public safety, and athletics. Her attention has always been on our students and their success now and after they leave Oregon Tech as well. Thank you, Vice President Foley, for all you have done. You'll be missed. Please join me now in welcoming Vice President Aaron Foley to recognize the Student Awards of Excellence. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Naganathan. And just for the record, it's not a matter of days, but hours. <laughs> but who's counting? All of the Portland Metro Campus Student Award winners were honored in a special ceremony earlier, but we also want to recognize them today. The Oregon Tech Portland Metro Campus has many exceptional students. The Student Awards Commission had a challenging time this year selecting this year's recipients, as each nominee is, an, is quite exceptional. The following awards were also presented at the awards reception on May 31st. Student awardees, please stand when I call your name and remain standing. Uh, audience, this is your time to participate appropriately. I will give a name and in response, you respond with a single clap. Uh -huh, I know you're bright, you can do it, so let's practice. Aaron Foley, not too bad, but yeah, a little delay on some, you gotta be right on it. Uh, let's try that again, Aaron Foley. Well, thank you, all right. All right, so here we go with our awards. Uh, the Outstanding Community Service Award goes to Anthony Cook, <laughs> Renewable Energy Engineering. The Outstanding Non-Traditional Student Award goes to Arthur Spears, <laughs> graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering Technology. The Outstanding Student Involvement Award goes to Billy Kimmel, <laughs> graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Renewable Energy Engineering. The Outstanding Academic Achievement Award goes to C.J. Hieronymus, graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Embedded Systems Engineering Technology. And the Outstanding Graduate Student Achievement Award goes to Abdul Abdullah Edwan, graduating with a Master's Degree in Renewable Energy Engineering. Please join me in giving all of these remarkable students a round of applause. Congratulations and well done. You may be seated. The outstanding scholars are students appointed by their department chair or program director who, in the opinion of the faculty, have demonstrated academic excellence in their major. Only one student may be appointed for any given program. Outstanding scholars are identified by a distinctive blue and gold cord today at commencement and have received a certificate recognizing their academic excellence. Again, I will announce them after I give the name, one single clap. Will these students please stand and remain standing as I call your name. The Portland Metro program's outstanding scholars this year are Cameron Cornelius, <laughs> cybersecurity. I got you, so name and then major. All right, Cameron, congratulations. Uh, Michael Shaiki Mori, information technology. James Kobelins, electrical engineering. Connor Nye, electronics engineering technology. CJ Hieronymus. Embedded Systems Engineering Technology. Douglas Friley, Operations Management. Curtis Keller, Technology and Management. Miles McElroy, Renewable Energy Engineering. Arthur Spears, Software Engineering Technology. Gemma Matthews, Mechanical Engineering. Laird Robertson, Mechanical Engineering Technology. Charles Matthews, Manufacturing Engineering Technology. Tiana Warner, Applied Psychology. Tio Lee, Medical Laboratory Science. Please join me in recognizing all of these outstanding scholars. You may be seated. And congratulations to the outstanding class of 2023. I'm going out with you. Well done. Thank you, Vice President Foley. Congratulations to all the student awardees. Today we have the honor of hearing from a graduating student 
who represents the College of Engineering, Technology, and Management. I am pleased and proud to introduce Isaac Warnake, who is graduating today with a 4.0 GPA and both a bachelor's and master's degree in electrical engineering. <laughs> Recognized for academic excellence, Isaac was nominated for the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award in 2022. Throughout his time at Oregon Tech, Isaac participated in various organizations, including the Oregon Tech Food Pantry, the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, and the prestigious Engineering Honor Society, Tau Beta Pi. Notably, Warnicke held numerous leadership positions within Oregon Tech's student branch of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers and contributed significantly to the group's success. Isaac's dedication to personal growth and academic support is evident from his involvement on campus. Initially working as a student at a welcome desk, at the welcome desk, Isaac quickly transitioned to becoming a tutor and later a teaching assistant. He began an internship at Tektronix during his senior year where he excelled as a field programmable gate array designer. Recognizing his talent and contributions, Tektronix has already extended him an offer to continue working at Tektronix after graduation. Isaac has made a lasting mark at Oregon Tech and we truly appreciate his participation and leadership in university student activities. Please join me in formally welcoming our student speaker, Isaac Warnicke. Thank you, I'm deeply honored to be here. Uh, four years ago, I was sitting in Professor Hammond's vector calculus math class as a 23-year-old freshman, eagerly looking forward to the end of my first school year and the warm Oregon summer that was laying ahead. I was fortunate enough to have been living with my grandparents at the time, and they fully supported my dream of going to school and enjoying my life at 23. My grandma truly lived up to the name, she welcomed me into her home the moment I asked and constantly insisted that I eat more. <laughs> we would often go on walks around the woods and surrounding neighborhoods and even did a bout of flashcards during reruns of Frasier my freshman year. I'm truly grateful for her support and the relationship we have and look forward to the many vacations we plan to take. Not only was I lucky enough to be my grandma's favorite, but I was also lucky enough to have met my girlfriend here in this seemingly all-male engineering program. We initially met in physics, but what we really had was chemistry. <laughs> she has been a huge support since the moment I met her, and I couldn't ask for a better partner. With that, I would like to take a moment and thank some of the people who have supported me through my, this journey. Thank you, John Graves, for helping me find and apply to Oregon Tech. And thank you to my old bosses, Nick and Omar, who constantly encouraged me to take a chance and seek an education here in Portland. I wanna thank my friends and family, Tutu, Chelsea, Mom, Dad, Luke, Christian, Terry, Joe, Cole, Kai, Shane, Bruno, Matt, Pat, Pam, and Scott for your love, support, and overall interest in my education. I would also like to thank Oregon Tech and its faculty and share the moment my appreciation for this institution began. Four years ago, as Professor Hammond's class was coming to an end, someone raised their hand and asked, will this be on the final? Without a moment's hesitation, Professor Hammond politely replied, if I only taught you what I was allowed to test you on, it would be a detriment to your education. If I only taught you what I was allowed to test you on, it would be a detriment to your education. From that moment, I knew that material would not be on the final. <laughs> but I also no longer looked at my assignments as mere tasks and busy work. I saw them as incredible opportunities to learn and grow. That moment also opened my eyes to the numerous exceptional faculty members we have here on campus. There's too many to thank individually, but I would like to express my appreciation for my graduate committee. Thank you, Dr. Mateo Aboy, 
Dr. Christina Crespo, and Dr. Scott Prawl. I would also like to thank the greatest instructor many of us might know, Alan Douglas. Alan was my teacher, my advisor, my mentor, and the literal keystone to my education. He is the type of person that if you were to thank him for anything, would insist he did nothing. So please, on my behalf, help me thank him with a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, wherever you are out here. Commencement ceremonies are not solely for us graduates. They are also a tribute to those who have supported us in our pursuit of higher education. I recognize that without the support of my family, friends, and teachers, this journey would have been far more difficult. Graduates, think of all of the people that have assisted you in getting here today and be sure to thank them sometime soon. To all of you here now and to those who could not join us, Thank you. To my fellow graduates, I am certain you have experienced the overwhelming sensation of the unknown, of tomorrow and what it holds. Remember that starting school too felt like this, yet here we are today celebrating the completion of this significant chapter. When you begin to feel afraid or like your path is uncharted, I encourage you to remember this African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone, and if you want to go far, go with others. Although it may be tempting to pursue personal success quickly, true and enduring accomplishments are most often achieved when we embrace each other and work together. So without further ado, congratulations class of 2023, we did it. May I request uh, Anne's family and friends that are here today, Isaac's parents, families, friends, could you stand up and be recognized? Thank you, Isaac. It's now my pleasure to welcome Oregon Tech's Vice Provost of Research and Academic Affairs and Interim Dean College of Engineering, Technology, and Management, Dr. Afshay, to the podium for the presentation of our graduates. As he comes up here to the podium, Vice Provost Afshay joined Oregon Tech in 2018. Before joining Oregon Tech, he was the Distinguished University Professor at the University of Toledo in Ohio. He also served as the Director of Major Research Initiatives, Chair of the Department of Mechanical, Industrial, and Manufacturing Engineering, and as Founding Director of the Small Turbine Engine Institute in partnership with Teledyne Technologies. Interestingly, Teledyne acquired FLIR next door, so they are a neighbor for us here now. He was also elected nationally to the prestigious rank of the Fellow of the American Society of Me Mechanical Engineers and was resident faculty at the NASA John H. Glenn Research Center at Lewis Field and the Ohio Aerospace Institute. Vice Provost F.J. is known for his focus on student success and has led comprehensive efforts focused on student achievement, fostering enrollment growth, building research initiatives, and improving department and university visibility. Dean F.J. also developed a joint international graduate degree program in India in mechanical and industrial engineering. Please join me in welcoming Vice Provost and Dean Dr. Abdi F.J. Thank you, President Naganathan. Will the graduate, graduating students please rise? <laughs> Will the faculty please rise? <clears throat> President Naganathan, these students who comprise the class of 23 are candidates for bachelor's, master's degree in their respective fields. Upon completion of their required curriculum, they are recommended by the faculty to receive their degrees. Thank you, Dr. Afjay. 
upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the State of Oregon and the trustees of the Oregon Institute of Technology, I do confer upon all of the qualified candidates, including those in absentia, the bachelor's and master's degrees for which they have met the requirements. You are charged with the duties and responsibilities of the degree and granted the privileges and prerogatives pertaining thereto. Congratulations, class of 2023. Please join me in congratulating our new graduates with a loud round of applause. Uh, please be seated. And now we will begin the recognition ceremony for our graduates. Dr. Dan Peterson, Dean of the College of Health, Arts, and Sciences, will now recognize each of the graduates. Will the first row of graduates please move to the side aisle? Uh, rem and the remaining rows, uh, you're already seated, so go ahead and stay seated. But if we could get the first group to move, great, thank you. Presenting the graduates for the Departments of Health Sciences and Medical Imaging is Department Chair, Associate Professor, Dr. Jamie Kennel. The graduate in the Master of Science, Allied Health, Carolina Mendelez Rodriguez. The graduate in the Bachelor of Science, Diagnostic Medical Sonography, Desiree Sandoval, graduating cum laude. The graduate in the Bachelor of Science, Echocardiography, Amy Bankowski. The graduate in the Bachelor of Science Echocardiography, Sarah Schuyler Beery. <laughs> Presenting the graduates of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences is Department Chair Professor Dr. Maria Lynn Kessler. The first graduate in the Master of Science Applied Behavior Analysis, Amy Geraldine Cotter. Madeline Claire Crowen.
Aira Kelly Duddleston. Shane Medina Mirasol. Anahita Perusman. Yasamin Sadat Mokhadam. Go. The first of the graduates in the Bachelor of Science Applied Psychology, Caitlin Marie Berry. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Annette Duyon. Jeanette Ruth Barcinas. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, Tessa Ray Leonard. Lassard. Les <laughs> Daniela. Perez Rivera. <laughs> the first graduate in the Bachelor of Science Population Health Management, Anthony Santillon. Dr. Avjay will now recognize each of the graduates in the College of Engineering, Technology, and Management. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science, Embedded Systems Engineering Technology, graduating magna cum laude, Chris Michelson. Michael Roberts. <laughs> the
the first graduate in the Bachelor of Science, Software Engineering Technology, graduating summa cum laude, Alex Diaz Rodriguez. <laughs> Logan Francisco. Graduating magnum cum laude, Chandler LeBlanc. <laughs> Brian Locke. Graduating summa cum laude, Nicholas David Luther. <laughs> Sam Mukaida. Graduating magna cum laude, Alex Porter. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Armando Santillan. <laughs> Nathan Tout. Forrest Warner. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, David White. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, John Paul Wydell. <laughs> graduating as an outstanding scholar and non-traditional student award winner and graduating summa cum laude, Arthur Spears. Presenting the graduates for the Department of Electrical Engineering and Renewable Energy Engineering is Department Chair, Professor Scott Prawl. The graduate in the Master of Science Engineering and graduating summa cum laude in the Bachelor of Science Electrical Engineering, Isaac Warnicke. The graduate in the Master of Science Renewable Energy Engineering Outstanding Graduate Achievement Award winner, Abdallah Adwan. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science Electrical Engineering, graduating magna cum laude, Matthew Blomer.
graduating magna cum laude, Brendan Dickerson. <laughs> graduating summa cum laude and outstanding scholar, James Koblenz. Graduating as an outstanding scholar and with a Bachelor of Science Renewable Energy Engineering, Miles McElroy. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Max Perez. Paul Plansich. Also graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Renewable Energy Engineering, James Trillon. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science, Renewable Energy Engineering, graduating cum laude, an Outstanding Student Involvement Award winner, and ASOIT president, Billy Kimmel. <laughs> Greg Whitlaufer. Presenting the graduate for the Department of Management is Professor Maureen Savigny. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity, Vincent Bifano. <laughs> Ostrich Aris Bloms III. Graduating cum laude, Daniel Botello Rodriguez. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Maria Botello Rodriguez. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, and as an outstanding scholar, Cameron Cornelius. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Irene Deer. <laughs> Jerome Kai. Graduating cum laude, Jose Guadalupe Martinez. <laughs> Megan Matty. <laughs> J. 
Joshua Parker. Michael Rask. Elijah Shotola. Graduating magna cum laude, Jordan Wolutic. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science Information Technology, Henry Hoang. <laughs> Danielle Johnson. Efren Rodriguez. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude and as an outstanding scholar, Michael Shiki Morris. <laughs> Samuel Simnit. Graduating summa cum laude, Chandler Simpson. Amy Jo Smith. Graduating cum laude, Jamie Vu. Graduating summa cum laude, Emily Zhang. The first of the graduates in the Bachelor of Science Operations Management, Corey Doyle. Graduating magna cum laude and as an outstanding scholar, Douglas Freely. Rashid Shineb. Graduating cum laude, Zachary Zotola. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Science Health Informatics and graduating as an outstanding scholar, Jessica Emhoff. Jeff Manton. The first graduate in the Bachelor of Applied Science Technology and Management, graduating magna cum laude and as an outstanding scholar, Curtis Keller, Jr. Graduating summa cum laude, Miguel Ramirez Perez.
presenting the graduates for the Department of Manufacturing and Mechanical Engineering and Technology is Department Chair Tim Passang. The first of the graduates in the Bachelor of Science Manufacturing Engineering Technology graduating cum laude, Peyton Delp. Natasha Marie Ely. <laughs> Graduating cum laude and as an outstanding scholar, Charles Edwards Matthews IV. Jake Mitchell. <laughs> the first graduate in the Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering, graduating magna cum laude, Garrett Allen. Graduating summa cum laude, Jake Baker. <laughs> Esther Seron Sateo. <laughs> Ronald Lee Collins. Graduating cum laude, Amber Connor. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Walid Hakum. Graduating summa cum laude and as an outstanding scholar, Gemma Matthews. <laughs> Sherine Sumamo. The first of the graduates in the Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering Technology, Eric Edberg. <laughs> Key Her. <laughs> Georgia Ann Hutchings. Last graduate, Corey Peters. Thank you, Dean Afjay and Dean Pearson for recognizing our graduates along with our other faculty members. Graduates, could you please rise? <laughs> graduates, please move your tassels to the left side of your cap, signifying your graduation 
from the Oregon Institute of Technology. Please be seated. And now for a special message from Jason Bridges, a 2004 graduate of Communication Studies. Jason is a driven, enthusiastic individual, as many of you know, who has always been guided by the principles of the Scout Oath and Law. He began his journey in Brookings, Oregon, spending most of his time with the scouting program and performing on stage. After graduating from high school, Jason chose to attend Oregon Tech because of its post-graduation job placement rate and affordability. He received his degree in communication studies with a focus on computer software engineering technologies in 2004 and went on to move to Los Angeles to learn the framework of filmmaking. After a few years in LA, Jason founded his own film production company and spent several years traveling across the United States, building his video portfolio and learning about the image industry. During this time, he held jobs with major companies such as NBC, DreamWorks Animation SKG, Sony, and Paramount Pictures. Jason, it would have been impossible for him to land a job at DreamWorks uh, that's what he believes, without the skills and knowledge gained at Oregon Tech. Jason recently shifted his focus from film to philanthropy, and we are happy to say he has joined the Oregon Tech development team, where he is dedicated to helping others maximize the value and impact of their giving. He brings passion for his craft and adventure to his life, and his love for his alma mater shows in all he does. Please give a warm welcome to Jason Bridges. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, before I get started, I have to say one big special thank you because I am blessed and I am supported by my wonderful family, Kara, Archer, and Scarlett. If I could give them a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, distinguished guests, and the exceptional graduating class of 2023. Today, I stand before you as a proud graduate of Oregon Tech from the class of 2004. And I tell you, it fills my heart to, with joy to witness this momentous occasion, where each and every one of you are ready to embark on a new journey. As I look out there, I see your bright faces, and I am refreshed and reminded of the incredible potential that resides within each and every one of you. So I want to take one moment so that we can all embrace our new shared identity and repeat after me. So say this together after me, repeat after me. I am from Oregon Tech. I am Oregon Tech. We're going to do that again, okay? I am from Oregon Tech. Okay. To the graduating class of 2023, I want to remind you of something powerful in addition to this. You can do anything. So please say it loud with a sense of confidence and determination. I can do anything. Embrace this mantra as you step into your professional world, knowing that the spirit of Oregon Tech it resides within you, propelling you to all of these new heights. In the industry, you're going to encounter moments when challenges seem insurmountable. And some may say, I don't know how to do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Let's give up. I'm ready to give up. Let someone else do it. That's not my job, right? <laughs> well, in, in those moments, you have an opportunity to shine. Remember your roots. Remember that you're from Oregon Tech. And let those skeptics know that you are not one to back down, that you possess the skills, knowledge, and determination to say it loud and say it proud together. I love it. I want to do it one more time. I love it. Thank you. 
As you navigate a world characterized by what some call rapid change, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. But beneath the surface, the core values and principles instilled in us at Oregon Tech remain constant. These values serve as your compass, guiding you through the ever-shifting landscape that you possess the knowledge, skills needed to adapt, innovate, and make a lasting impact. Let's reflect on the power of leading with light, radiate positivity, practice patience, and extend kindnesses to those you meet. When we're faced with these challenges, maintain your optimism, for it is in these moments that I believe true growth occurs. Now, as we conclude this remarkable milestone, I want to extend a welcome to you to the Oregon Tech alumni family. You are joining a 30,000 strong community that spans decades and still continues to grow today. Done with that one. As you transition from a student to alumni, I encourage you to stay connected, engaged, and become an active part of this incredible network. Please keep in touch with those around you. Keep in touch with your fellow alumni. Attend events, volunteer, and pay it forward. This is not a mere ask, but an opportunity for you to embrace the richness of this community and contribute to its growth. Through the Alumni Association, you will have access to a wealth of resources, mentorship programs, and networking opportunities like you never believe. Tap into this network. Remember, you are not alone on this journey in life. Reach out to your fellow alumni, seek guidance, and offer support to those of you you can. Together, we can achieve remarkable things. So in closing, I'm going to use my cool signs again and let our voices proudly proclaim. Thank you very much. Congratulations, class of 2023, and welcome to Oregon Tech alumni. Of course, a guy from the film industry, what do you expect? He brings his own props. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our new alumni graduates. You are now joining, as Jason said, the ranks of thousands of Oregon Tech alumni. Now I ask all of you in the audience to help me do something very important to show all of our graduates how happy we are for that incredible accomplishments as Oregon Tech grads. Now please listen to the instruction. Let's bring the house down with a final round of applause and recognition of our graduates, not a polite applause, but a standing, stomping, yelling, enthusiastic round of applause. Let's go do it. Well done, thank you, please be seated. As we close today's ceremony, all of us at Oregon Tech wish you well in the coming months and years. As our new alumni, we may call on you to support the next generations of students, just as those before you have, with class presentations, job tips, networking help, and support to help our students stay in school and excel. Graduates, enjoy the rest of your celebration today. Welcome to the beginning of the next part of your life. The 75th Oregon Tech commencement is now concluded. Please rise for the recessional and wait for the platform party, the faculty and the graduates to exit the area. Congratulations and go Owls.